Let's talk a little bit about the PDM-2. Unlike the DSM and ICD, which describe diagnostic categories but don't take a definitive stance on their underlying causes, the Psychodynamic Diagnostic Manual, or PDM, is much more explicitly theoretical. It conceptualizes its diagnoses in psychodynamic terms. Currently in its second edition, the PDM-2 makes diagnoses along three different axes. The p-axis in the PDM looks at levels of personality organization. So the first thing you'd do if you were assessing somebody on the p-axis is that you would rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the most pathological and 10 the least pathological. Somebody who scored a 9 or a 10 would be considered somebody who has a healthy level of personality organization. That is, their preferred coping style is pretty effective, um, it may have some issues, but it's generally pretty flexible and it accommodates the challenges of everyday life. At the neurotic level, a score of 6 to 8, a person would respond to certain stressors with a, a certain degree of rigidity, even though overall the person has a, a pretty good level of functioning. The borderline level of personality functioning is, is identified in people who, who have a score of 3 to 5. And these folks have difficulty with emotional regulation. So situations often overwhelm them, and they'll sometimes report intense experiences of depression, anxiety, or rage. And then last but not least, we have the psychotic level. These are folks who score only a 1 to 2 in the level of personality organization scale, and they're probably experiencing some sort of break with reality or a very poor sense of their own identity. We would experience them as very highly defensive, and we would think that they probably have difficulty distinguishing fantasy from reality. Another thing we might do when making a p-axis diagnosis is we might identify a central personality syndrome that the individual displays. And notice that in this chart of personality syndromes, each personality syndrome has a central tension or preoccupation, an issue that seems to bother the person. Also shows central affects, that is, these are emotions that the individual displays that are characteristic of that personality style. And then there are certain pathogenic beliefs about self and others that the individual tends to uh, hold true, and that are influential in the overall pattern. So for example, look at the first syndrome here. It's the depressive personality style. This person tends to have a, a central tension or preoccupation where they're very self-critical or self-punishing. They're very concerned about relatedness to other people or having loss in relationships. The central affects or emotions they display tend to be sadness, guilt, or shame. And the pathogenic beliefs they have tend to be things like, I am bad or inadequate. Something I need will be um, uh, need for well-being has been lost. Or they believe that others will reject them once they get to know them. Right? Those would be central beliefs that the person holds. Then, for example, we might have, if we go down a little bit, take a look at the anxious avoidant phobic personality syndrome. Right? This individual has a central tension or preoccupation with staying safe or avoiding danger and pathogenic beliefs that say, I'm always in danger and must keep myself safe. Um, but they tend to believe that others are either dangerous or they're there to protect me or they should be able to protect me. So that those are two examples. Another example might be the narcissistic personality style. This person has either an inflating or deflating sense of self-esteem. They tend to display shame, humiliation, contempt, and envy. And their beliefs tend to be, I must be perfect to be okay. Or about others, they say others are okay and have good things and I must have more of those things to feel better about myself. Right? So you can see each of these personality styles has certain characteristics. And on a p-axis assessment, we want to know overall how does the person score on the scale of 1 to 10 and what characteristic personality styles does the person display. So you can see from this way of looking at things, this way of assessing things on the p-axis, that what we're doing is very different from the traditional categorical DSM-style diagnosis. The PDM's m-axis provides a profile of mental functioning. It assesses patients in four different areas. Their cognitive and emotional processes, their identity and relationships, their defenses and coping, and their self-awareness and self-direction. When evaluating somebody on the M-axis, we would rate them along the various mental functions using a one to five scale, and then we'd come up with an overall score that would range from 12 to 18 for somebody who's severely impaired, to 54 to 60 for somebody who is a highly healthy and functioning individual. The third and final axis of a PDM2 diagnosis is the S-axis, 
which gets at subjective experience, the S-axis places common symptom patterns into diagnostic categories. It takes the major DSM disorders, and it describes in psychodynamic terms what it's like to have them. So that's a brief review of the Psychodynamic Diagnostic Manual. What do you think?